Okay, so this one we're going to show how to shoot in multiple directions. So, for example, like Smash TV is a game where you could like um, shoot in the right, up, down, left, right direction, and uh, just based on which uh, of which direction you're placing on your D-pad. So you can move around with with one thumbstick and then shoot with the other one, or one joystick and shoot with the other one. And that's what we're going to do is show you how to shoot in four directions. So I'm just going to start building a little level here. I've got this ice cap. I'm just going to make it huge um, and stretch it out so that we have some background there we go. Um, just to give us like something on the on our background no other use than that and I'll put our star on top of it which will be our character um, and we're gonna shoot these little apples so the idea is I'll just stick him in, in the middle and if I hit the right arrow I want to shoot an apple going this way and up this way left and down and that's that's the idea. So if we run this thing, we've got our little star there. Not right now, nothing is doing anything, so um, that's okay. Um, so let's start writing some code. Uh, C sharp script. We will call it player controller. We're gonna write two scripts on this one. We'll write one script that's for the player that's gonna determine um, when it's time to shoot something, and then we'll put another script on our apple that we're going to shoot um, to make sure it goes in the right direction. So here's our player controller. Uh, inside of update, we will just have something like if input dot get key down. So we're going to do it on a key down. So every time you press, we'll get one shot. Uh, so for uh, get key down, key code dot right arrow. And we will shoot right, and then we will do all of these. And it's probably a little better to put these things in different functions, but that's okay. Uh, we'll say else this. We're only going to shoot in one direction. And if you want to change that, go for it. Uh, get key down. Let's do right, left, shoot left. Up, down, up, and this will be down. Shoot down. Okay, so this should all work, and um, and then inside of here we will um, shoot our apples. So I just go back here and make sure everything's working good. No errors down here, so everything seems to be fine. Um, we're going to need to know what we want to create. So we're going to create an apple. So um, inside of Unity, let me click on my little star guy, um, attach the script to it, and we want to be able to drag in this apple over to the script so that when we hit the right arrow, we actually shoot this apple. So we're going to make a public game object, and this will be, mm, we can call it bullet. It's an apple, but it's a bullet. And if we hit the right arrow, we will want to instantiate, instantiate our bullet. And we'll just put it transform.position for now and quaternion.identity. And we will probably start to adjust this position later on, just and you'll see why. Um, but right now, this is the idea. We'll create a bullet here. And that's it. So let's go take a look at what we've got over in this thing. So we have our apple, um, and move it away. So if I if I create this thing, um, we we want to do more than just create it. We want it to actually move and go somewhere. Um, and so I'm going to put a, a script on it. Create C sharp script. We'll call it bullet. So we'll call it bullet controller, but we're going to be throwing apples. Um, and if you Want to use real bullets? That's fine. Or if you want to throw throw apples, that's fine too. Um, so anyway, so we have this apple over here um, in our hierarchy that has a script on it that's called bullet controller. We haven't done anything with it yet, but I'm going to create a prefab of this because this is what we actually want to create when we hit the right arrow. We want to create the one with the script so it goes off to the side, it shoots in the right direction. So I'm dragging that down. I just dragged our apple um, from our hierarchy down here, so it created a prefab of that thing, which is this is just the apple. This is the apple and the script. All right, so I'll delete it out of our scene. 
And then now if I look at our star, um, the bullet over here says none. I can drag our prefab over to it. And there we go. And so now if I run and hit uh, the right arrow, it instantiates our bullet. And it doesn't move, and that's OK. And if I keep pounding on the keyboard, it's going to cre keep creating a lot of them. Um, so now we need to actually make this thing move. So in our, let me open up our bullet controller. Um, we could have a public float speed equals 0.1f. That'll be the speed of our bullet. And inside of our update loops, remember this script is attached to our bullet. And this is going to be in charge of moving it. So um, we'll say vector2 position equals transform dot position, position dot x plus equals speed, and transform dot position equals position. So this is going to kind of work. So every time it updates 60 times a second, we are going to increment our x um, by our speed value that's here, and then update our, our position. So if I come back here, now when I hit the right arrow, it's going to shoot off to the edge of the screen. Um, note, though, that every time we're clicking that, we're creating new instances of these things. And if I zoom out and get out far enough, we'll see that they're all just moving over here. So even though they're way off camera, they're, they're moving, and we don't want that. So we want to be able to delete these things. Um, we could put box colliders around the edge. We could dynamically uh, figure out um, you know, where they are in, in the camera view. There's all sorts of complicated ways we could do this. We're going to go for the shortest and quickest way, which is we will delete these things after, let's just say, five seconds. Um, so I will make a new coroutine. And then I didn't, this wasn't really the point of this example, but I'm putting one in here just so we, we clean up after ourselves. So it's an enumerator. I enumerator destroy bullet. And inside of this thing, we will do a yield, return, new, wait for seconds. We'll just say five seconds. And then we will destroy game object. So little game object means destroy myself. And um, after we start, we will start a coroutine called destroy bullet. So now our bullet's only going to live for five seconds. And let's make sure that that works. So here, it's on our side over here. Two, three, four, five, go. Now it's gone. So that works. It's not exactly the best way to do it, but it's certainly a way to do it. And that way, we're cleaning up after ourselves. OK, so this is all good for pressing the right arrow, right? We instantiate a bullet. And we start where we're at, and no rotation, and then it starts going. Um, problem is now when we want to go and shoot left, it's going to get even more confusing because in our bullet controller, we've got the speed, and it's hard coded um, to go um, in the x direction. And what we want to do um, is be able to change the speed uh, if we're pushing left. So it's public; we can do that. But the way our code is written, we just instantiate and we don't save off a reference to it. So if we do something like this, like game object, say game object geo equals, and then we'll cast it. And I'm just going to space this out a little bit so you can see. OK, so now we have a reference to this game object. And that's good. Um, so we can now we can change the speed we want to. So I can say geo.get component. And the component could be this bullet controller. Bullet controller like this dot speed. And now we can set it equal to something. Equal 0 0.1 f. That's when we're shooting right. Um, this whole business here didn't change anything because our default speed is 0.1 f. And that's what we did here. But if we want to put it in our shoot left, this, then I can change my speed to negative, right? And then when we come to our bullet controller, we'll create it, we'll set our speed to negative, 
We'll come down here. Our position x is going to be plus equal speed, which is going to make it go off to the left now. Let's see what happens. Does that work? Right, right, left, left, right, left, right, left. And are they all cleaning up after themselves? There they all go. So that's working. Very good. Um, how do we do that? Hmm. Well, we have one speed. Let's change this thing. Let's call it x speed and y speed. So now we can shoot in two different directions. X speed. And position on x plus equals x speed. And for now, let's just set all these equal to zero. Why not? Zero. And then position dot y plus equals y speed. This will work. So now when we want to shoot um, in the y direction, we just need to make sure that we um, uh, add 0.1 to our y speed or make it negative 0.1 if we're going down. So where is our code? Player controller. This doesn't exist anymore, so we'll say x speed equals 0.1 and x speed is negative 0.1 and then let's do this for our y's we can say y speed and y speed plus one and let's see does that work right right left left up up down, down. Oh, what the heck? Ah, look at this. So we want to increment our y by y speed, not our x. That makes no sense. All right, let's try it again. Second try should work. Maybe third try, right? Left, up, down. All right, so I got our ups and our downs backwards, which I tend to do. So let's come back in here, and we will change this one to a plus and this one to a minus. That was actually kind of weird to have that plus sign there. Don't really need it. Uh, but let's run it again. Right, right, left, left, up, up, down, down. Okay. Um, and then if you wanted to shoot at an angle, um, we could do something like this. Let's, see. let's just say uh, right arrow, we're going to shoot at an angle. Then we can set them both. And now it's going to go off at an angle. So just determine your uh, key combinations of whatever you want and then make it go in that direction. We'll just keep with four directions for now. OK, so one thing that's a little bit strange, um, we're shooting, we shoot, we create it on top of ourselves, which is fine if you're just using triggers or if um, you don't have any box colliders, but generally you're going to have colliders with what you're shooting and with your character. And when you do this with colliders, all things bad things are going to happen because you're instantiating the apple right on top of the star, which also has a collider, and things start to fall apart. So what we really want is, if I hit the up arrow, I want my first apple to start right at the top of the star. And if I hit right, I want it to be over here, and down, start down here, and left over here. So we're going to make one more change. Um, Inside of our update, we can say vector to position equals transform dot position. And then when we create our game object, instead of using transform dot position, we will change our position just a little bit. So um, if we're going to go to the right, we will say position dot x plus equals point, let's just say point five f. And then we'll change this to position. And let's see what that does. So now it's coming out right at the point of the star. Look, all these other ones are from the middle. And when I go right, it's instantiating on the right side of the star. So that's pretty good. Um, looks OK. So we'll make all these adjustments for the rest of them. So we're going left. We'll say minus equals. And we need to change this to position, right? Because this is our calculated position. We're going up. This is going to be y. And if we're going down, this would be y 
minus. And now when we run left, right, up, down. Hmm. Ups and downs don't seem to make any difference. Why not? Oh, then change these. Uh, see that? I had these still as transformed out position, not just position. Position is more modifying. Transformed out position is the position of the star. All right, now what do we see? Right, left, up, down. So now if we have any kind of collider business, it's not going to happen. And you can you know, space these out however you want to. But now it's not overriding our star when we shoot these things. We'll go like this. So that's it. That's showing us how to shoot in multiple directions uh, based on unique keys for each one. Um, you can write the code to say if you're pushing both down at the same time that you want to go at an angle, that kind of stuff, or have eight different positions. Or if you have an analog joystick, you can figure out your different ranges and make sure that it behaves accordingly. So uh, that's it for shooting.